Now, with the European elections firmly behind us now, it's time for the power players to start deciding who will be the next leader of the powerful European Commission. For more on this and other news from around the world, let's turn to our Hong Yu. So EU leaders, they're all gathered in Brussels for an EU summit. Uh, have they been discussing who will take uh, one of Europe's most powerful political positions? Well, Mark, regarding the leaders' preferences for the top EU position, there is no clear front runner. Whoever gets the position is considered the leader of the EU because the European Commission is executive arm of the 28 nation bloc. EU leaders can propose candidates, and for a candidate to get the nod, a majority of the 751 members of European Parliament have to approve the choice when it assumes power in July. The president of the European Commission has the power to propose EU laws and enforce them. Let's take a look at who they think should replace Jean-Claude Juncker. Mr. Barnier, Mr. Timmermans and many others have these competencies. But I don't want to have a debate on names. I want to have a debate on projects, on priorities and on criteria. Naturally, coming from a grand coalition, I support and am in favor of Manfred Weber, but not all parties do. But despite this, the Spitzen candidate is very important. Preferences are even more splintered this year as the European Parliament is fragmented, with two major centrist blocs losing their majority and nationalists and Greens picking up their seats. The conditions are expected to negotiations to pick a consensus nom nominee for president of the commission more difficult. The new commission president will take office on November 1st, allowing, along with the new European Council president, European Central Bank president, and EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs.